Hello. I'm continuing with my series of informational videos about the languages of Southeast Asia, and today I'm going to be talking about Malay. And to help me do that, I have, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, good morning. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Noor Hakima Raisa Binti Ahmad. I'm from Malaysia. Okay, good. So, uh, Malaysian uh, is a language. Uh, we talked about some other languages in the family. It's called an Austronesian language. Uh, those are most of the languages on the islands of Southeast Asia belong to this, this family. Um, Malaysian, I checked, I think it has something like 39 million speakers. Um, it's an official language in Malaysia, of course, also here in Singapore and in Brunei. Uh, and I'm wondering if you can tell me, um, when I was in Brunei, um, it was sort of very alive. I heard it spoken all around me. Here in Singapore, it's sort of like in third place. Um, obviously, in Malaysia, it's the official language. Um, and so here, uh, a lot of the, the other language specialists, some of them are ethnically Chinese mm -hmm. or uh, Indian, but they, they're from Malaysia and they speak Malay you know, you know, perfectly. Mm -hmm. How strong is Malay in Malaysia? Can you answer that? Okay, in Malaysia, because the medium of instruction in school is Bahasa Malaysia or Bahasa Melayu, there are two names for it. So because of that, I think everybody in Malaysia can speak Bahasa Malaysia very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, besides, uh, that is also, uh, not only the official language for the, uh, Malaysia, that is also um, the well, the prime minister considered that as the language to unite the mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So Malaysia, like Singapore, is multi-ethnic. Lots of Chinese exactly. and lots of Hindus. What's the whole population of Malaysia? Uh, roughly about twenty-eight million. Twenty-eight million. Mm -hmm. So in that thirty-nine million, they're already including lots of of other people, I guess, because. Uh, Brunei only has about half a million, and here in Singapore, not everybody speaks. I, I really, I found something very interesting about uh, my observations of Malay. One here in Singapore uh, is that one day uh, I was we were going on a, on a bus tour, and the photographer was uh, an elderly uh, Indic uh, Singaporean, and the driver was an elderly uh, Chinese Singaporean, but they were communicating in Malay. And they said in their generation, until about 1960, here in Singapore, Malay was the official language, and so everybody of the older generation can speak it. But here it doesn't have that role anymore. So it's, it's, it's still, like you said, your prime minister sees it as the uniting force. Uh, one thing, because uh, in order to unite the Malaysian in general, back then it was called, it's called uh, Malaya. So the only way to unite it is through language, mm -hmm. one. And number two, to make it as a medium of instruction in school. And because Singapore used to be part of Malaysia, so in 1960s, uh, Malay is very uh, widely used even in Singapore mm -hmm. because that is also the one of the language languages for medium of instruction in Singapore. Okay. Um, I know that uh, Malay in some of the books that uh, we looked at, and when I see it here in Singapore, when it's written in signs and, and the, uh, in the subway trains and things like that, it uses the, um, the Roman alphabet, ABCs. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I was interested and surprised to see in, uh, in Brunei is there they use a, a variant of the Arabic script called the, the Jawri script. Mm -hmm. um, and that was everywhere. Uh, and so it seemed very strong there. Is, is the Jawri script used in Malaysia? Yes, but not in school uh, for all subjects, only for one particular subject, uh, which is Islamic Education Studies. Mm -hmm. So even the textbook is actually written in the Jawi, or okay. the Arabic. Uh, okay. So can you read that just as well as you can read yes. this? Yes. yes. Okay. But are there books published in it? Are there lots of things uh, in the Jawi? Most of the, yes, religious there is books. one uh, religious books and also newspaper. We have one, Jawi mm -hmm. newspaper. Yeah. Okay. So everybody can read both scripts? For the Malays. For the Malays. For the Malays. Uh, you mean the ethnic Malays? Yeah. Okay. So a Chinese or an Indian resident of Malaysia might speak Malay, but they'd only read the, the no, Roman script? No, they're not used to the script because for the Chinese and Indian students in Malaysia, they will, whenever we have Islamic education studies class, they will go to the moral class. Mm -hmm. So they are not exposed to this. Uh, Okay. Well, um, I made a previous video about uh, Indonesian and uh, Javanese, and Malay and Indonesian, they have an interesting relationship, but I think uh, we'll leave that for a moment and in a minute have a student from Indonesia join us and, and talk about the mutual intelligibility issue. Let's just talk about the dialects of Malay. Again, the, when I was in Brunei, they said, you know, there's Brunei and Malay and there's standard Malay, and if they uh, meet somebody from Malaysia, they would have to use standard Malay in order to be able to communicate. Are there lots of dialects? there will be about 10 to 12 dialects uh -huh. and all of the, most of the people have difficulty
difficulty to understand each other. Uh -huh. So the best way is to speak in one sentence. Uh -huh. Constant drilling sounds in Singapore, sorry. Um, just a constant building yes. sounds in Malaysia too. Yes. Um, so, uh, can you tell us, uh, Malay and Indonesian, these Austronesian languages, they have a reputation for being relatively simple and easy to learn in terms of their grammatical structure. Is that your feeling when a lot, have you met a lot of uh, sort of people who've come to Malaysia and been able to learn the language successfully? Uh, when I was in university for my first degree, uh, one of my professors is, is actually an American who has a PhD in Barcelona, Malaysia. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, when I asked him, he said it's not that difficult at all to learn. Uh -huh. Okay. Can you uh, give some samples? Can you speak some? Maybe you just say a sentence or two and then let's analyze what you said and uh, talk about how the language works. Give us a sample of what it sounds like. Okay. Uh, if I were to introduce myself, I would say Nama Saya Nur Hakima. Nama Saya Alexander. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so Nama is name. Name. Nama. Saya is saya me. Is me, my own, yeah. or really me. Yes, uh -huh. me. Uh, uh -huh. Saya in that's the problem in Bahasa Malaysia. Uh, for the pronoun Saya, it can be object pronoun, it can be subject pronoun. Mm -hmm. So for this case, Saya is object pronoun. Okay. Say so something else. Yeah, uh, and the way we pronounce it, for example, the um, East Malaysian will be very baku. They will pronounce it according to the spelling, nama saya, mm -hmm. followed by name. But uh, if you come to West Malaysia, for example, I'm West Malaysian, I will change the ending or the final um, vowel to a, mm -hmm. nama saya. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. That's the difference. And, and it's very much because of dialectal influence. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. you should say something else. Uh, saya suka belajar. Saya, saya suka belajar. Yeah. Saya again uh, I, I but as subject. Uh -huh. Suka like. Like. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Belajar. Uh, it can be read. It can be go to school. Mm -hmm. I like to study. Mm -hmm. yes. Saya suka belajar. Yes. She is a very good student. She does. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, learning Malaysian. Let's talk about. It. I I had a couple of things in my life. I looked over. Did you? If anybody wants to get this book, Melee for Everybody, do you know of any other, you said your American professor learned it well, do you have any recommendations if anybody would want to learn Melee? Did this book look good? Uh, do you have any well, recommendations? According to him, now that is why I prefer not to use this, uh -huh. he actually advised us to read other things, for example, the, uh, the legends and myth, mm -hmm. and then uh, the proverbs, mm -hmm. and also pantoons, because mm -hmm. when you talk about pantoon or going down, these are two literary genres which are which you won't find it in English mm -hmm. or any other languages. Wonderful. That's what I love to talk about in these little videos. Um, there's so many languages in the world. People, some people are interested in languages want to learn them, but we always need more read reasons, motives. Tell us about Malay culture. Tell us about Pantoons. I mean, if somebody wants to make an effort to go learn an interesting exotic language, it's not too hard, and get a lot of reward by mm. learning some unique literature. Can you tell us something about this, this, this Malay literature? Okay. For example, if you learn about Pantoon, you will not only learn about the Malay culture, you will learn about uh, some moral values in it. Mm. But Pantoon is not a story. It's actually four lines of... Um, Four lines. It's it can be used as a song. It can mm -hmm. be used as uh, a riddle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example. Can so you read one, please? This is actually a translated uh, pantun. This is, is in this English. English. This okay. is in Malay. So, for example, malam ini merendang jagung, malam esok merendang serai. Malam ini kita berkampung, malam esok kita bercerai. It means tonight means for the roasting set. Tomorrow it is lemon grass. Tonight we are get uh, we are together met tomorrow on our way on our ways we pass. Mm -hmm. So it's not only very uh, Malay, but you will see that this is how the Malay says goodbye. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, that's interesting. So these are four line uh, poems. And what were some other things that are unique to uh, Malay culture? Uh, because we are multiracial countries. Uh, one of the ways to get to know uh, not only the Malays but to see the similarity, for example, between the Malay and Chinese and Indian, you can look at the proverb. For example, I can't speak Chinese, but there is one proverb in Chinese mm -hmm. which is very similar to Malay and can be translated to English. Mm -hmm. In English, it means uh, do not cry over spilled milk. Mm -hmm. In Malay, uh, nasi sudah menjadi bubo. And there is one, again in Chinese, but the similarity is again about food mm -hmm. and whatever that you have done, it cannot be undone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Uh, 
How about uh, myths and legends? How how far back does Malay traditional culture go? Because the Malays are uh, initially before Islam came into Malaya or Malaysia, uh, we were very much influenced by the Hinduism and also Buddhism. So you will see some of the legends and myths. They are actually very much influenced by the Ramayana and Mahabharata epic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the famous m movies is actually uh, Putri Gunung Ledang. Putri means princess. Gunung is mount. Uh, Ledang is the, the, I don't know how to translate it, but this princess, she is very powerful with uh, mystical power. Mm -hmm. yeah. So because of that, uh, whoever wants to marry her, the person must fulfill seven impossible um, conditions. Mm -hmm. So nobody dares to marry her. So if you want to know more, you can watch uh, Putri Gunung Ledang Musical Theatre. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any, uh, if uh, some people are going to find this video because they're already interested in, in Mele, some mm -hmm. people might find these videos because they like the series and mm -hmm. now they know about Mele and they might want to find more information, get some ideas for learning it. Uh, do you have any words of encouragement or ways that where places where people can look to learn more about uh, All Mele? I can say, come to Malaysia, sign up for the homestay, uh, visit tourismmalaysia.com.my and you can actually learn everything about Malays. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Let's uh, go see if we can find Witty to join us and uh, talk about uh, Mele and Indonesian uh, mutual intelligibility in the next video. Okay. All right. Continuing with my series on the languages of Southeast Asia, uh, I have now already made a film about uh, Indonesian and Javanese. And just moments ago, with Kim's help, finished making a film about uh, Malaysian, uh, and now we've been joined by another resident of Indonesia and a uh, native Javanese speaker, but also a fluent Indonesian speaker, um, Widianto. Widianto, yeah. And the first thing I want to say, you only have one name, is that common there? Yeah, uh, for Indonesian, as well for Javanese, we usually have only one name. Uh -huh. Yeah, starting from my, can, I don't know, uh, my can father, my father, me, and uh -huh. father, uh, my uh, for my daughter, I gave more than one name only. Okay. Yeah. But still, there is no family name. Okay, yeah. no family name. Okay, so with he, you can represent Indonesia. And Kim, you can represent M Malay, Malaysian, mm -hmm. the languages we're talking about. Now, Malay Malaysian and Indonesian, they are, genetically speaking, if you go to a chart uh, and follow all the links down the chain, mm -hmm. they're identical. They yeah. are the same language. Yeah. And there are times when it's claimed that they are the same language, to truly mutual intelligible. There have been other classes here that I've taught. Once yeah. I had a class in a, in a phonetic segment, and I asked the students to separate themselves according to their native language um, so that they could talk about the particular sounds and problems that they had in English. And the Malaysians and the Indonesians, they went together of their own volition. I didn't tell them to. They went together. Yeah. They said it's the same language. But on the other hand, I've asked some people, at some times to try to describe the difference. Is it like British English and American English? And they're like, oh, well. And when I've asked them to describe some other that they can really understand everything, they, they kind of hesitate. And I think you two have told me, when I asked you about this at times, yeah. you said, well, you'd be surprised <coughs> at how different uh, they can be. So, so what's the story? How similar or different are Malay and Indonesia? Can you give us your, your feelings? And also, so let's say some things when you s about what's different. Let's hear how you would say them and how you would say them. Okay, uh, especially for Indonesia, we we had uh, we said that our language is syllabic, so we we said what uh, is written there. For example, bahasa uh, for Malay, I think it bahasa. bahasa. Yeah, and uh, surprisingly, because I'm from West. Yeah, surprisingly, uh, when I went for the first time in Singapore, when I went to a mosque, they use similar to bahasa Indonesia, and then I I talked to Kim and oh no, that's not bahasa Indonesia, that's bahasa Baku. So uh, if you want to see uh, what is Bahasa Indonesia, it's just uh, Singaporean, Malay, what we, they call Bahasa Baku. That's mm -hmm. very similar to the language that uh, Indonesian use every mm -hmm. day. Okay. Yeah. So you, as, uh, as an Indonesian citizen, yeah. somebody who speaks Indonesian not yeah. as your native first language, but as your national language, your educational yeah. Yeah. language, you're a fluent yes. native speaker of it in that sense. Yeah. You come to a country like Singapore <coughs> where Malay, form of Malay yeah. is spoken. And let's say you meet somebody who doesn't speak English well, you have to communicate through this language. Is it perfectly easy? Are there any difficulties? Uh, 
Yeah, sometimes I, I have to cross what uh, they want to say, and then I have to uh, do code switch or code mix because mm -hmm. sometimes uh, even when I speak to uh, Chinese uh, taxi driver, they use uh, Malay, and uh, I have to use um, Indonesian. A little bit tends to be uh, Malay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still. Uh, I can craft what, what's the main idea that they that they want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, how about you? I mean, if you <coughs> were somehow to get a job offer in Jakarta, mm -hmm. could you just pick up and go and go into the office and communicate with the people in no problem, or would there be little hitches? I would see minor hitches. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because of the uh, false cop needs, I find when I talk to Widi and from my experience <coughs> going to uh, several places in Indonesia, we have problems with <coughs> certain words. For example, when I say I went to Pusing, Singapore, he thought I was sick. Yeah, because Pusing means uh, headache okay. or yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but to me, Pusing means sightseeing. Yeah. Sightseeing. Yeah. Sightseeing. Yeah. sightseeing. Can you give some other examples, just from your experience, what's something that you would say Benat. in Malay that would really make you misunderstood in Saya Indonesia? Saya penat. Uh, penat is still understandable. Penat means uh, But target. in your language, it's capek. Capek, yeah. <laughs> so I have difficulty. I, I have to think, yeah, now I, I remember the word. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is it? Yeah, okay, just now I, I talked to uh, a Chinese Malaysian who tried to speak in English, but actually it's not a perfect English. And then I tried to, okay, cakap uh, Malay, yeah, and then I just uh, try uh, a worker here. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I think it's bad, uh, it's worse than what I, I experienced with uh, Singaporean because uh, they, they use, uh, uh, the, the people uh, originally use. Uh, uh, something like Mandarin or something because he, he is Chinese, Chinese Malaysia, but they try to communicate in English and it is also not perfect English. And then I try to, okay, uh, Malay, Malay, yeah, and then I try to use uh, Malay word from I read from Kim, and then he also doesn't know, so okay, just bye bye, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, but you just taught me if I say, uh, what is it, Nama Saya Alexander? Mm -hmm. Did yeah. I just say that right in, in Indonesian? It's just the same, okay. Nama Saya Widianto. Okay, yeah. Nama Saya Widianto. Yeah, not Saya, Saya. saya. Yeah. yeah, Nama Saya. Yeah. Can, you, can you give some other examples of things that would be different? <coughs> mm. Would be different. Uh -huh. mm. Okay, sweat, remember? Keringat. Pelu. Pelu, yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, pelu is still uh, understandable for us, mm -hmm. but we don't use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But pusing, uh, this is a false cognate because mm -hmm. pusing means uh, headache. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have two, two words for this one, for headache. Pusing and pening. Mm -hmm. Pening means uh, uh, because of things. Uh, pusing because I have so many problems. That's mm -hmm. uh, pusing is this Even for some places, for example, mm -hmm. uh, Roma Sakit, we call it hospital. Uh, for um, Roma Makat, we call it just restaurant. Yeah, restaurant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we use restaurant and rumah makan, but uh, what is it? Uh, it's different uh, the the origin because a restaurant is come from uh, French and then come to English, and uh, we use it uh, in our language, mm -hmm. and then also for hospital. But uh, rumah makan is totally Malay or Indonesian. <coughs> Indonesian, uh, uh, yeah, because yeah. we never use the word rumah makan. Yeah, so and in Japanese, yeah, mm -hmm. so rumah there, makan. There are different words. Is there any grammatical difference? I would say in terms of addiction, just uh, yeah, yeah, addiction because the word uh, the word category will be mm -hmm. the same word. Okay. For example, toilet or the restroom, we call it bilik air, but mm. you call it kamar. Kamar kecil. Okay. And I heard from my friend that in uh, uh, Malaysia, rumah sakit besar it with call uh, hospital for delivering baby uh, mm -hmm. for uh, delivering baby. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it rumah sak uh, hospital korban laki laki. Mm -hmm. I heard from, but I don't know whether it is. I've never it heard of that yeah. term before. Because I, I heard from uh, 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 students, my students mm -hmm. from Malay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so is it? And then uh, push up means bersetubuh dengan bumi kata. Is it just so? So push up. Push up. Exercise push ups. Yeah, push up. Uh, we call it just push up because uh, we have no. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's, because it's as far as I know, push up means the can to be. That's it. The can to be. That means the can to be. Yeah. yeah. We said persetubu. So it's right. words. Words yeah. are different. Grammar. Yeah, yeah. Is grammar is the same. What say. percent would you estimate? Is it the overlap? Is are they ninety percent the same? Ninety five percent the same? May uh, for mutual intelligibility maybe yeah. sixty. Only sixty percent. I same? think so. I think seventy. Yeah. 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 But seventy. Not 70 yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. So it is. So if it's only seventy percent <coughs> the same, I mean, is it or is it not the same language? 
is it not the same language? Is it or is it not the same language? I never do carry out any study, but I would say it's mm. different. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, I can say that originally, uh, as, as you said, that uh, it is uh, historically just the same. Some mm -hmm. uh, something like, uh, as I said, that uh, my language and uh, Henry sometimes we have uh, uh, cognates, mm -hmm. and then when I when we talk about <coughs> history. Uh, we know that uh, some part of Philippines was actually under Majapahit. Majapahit means uh, a kingdom, a, a very big kingdom in South Asia, which uh, the capital is in Java. Yeah, actually, it, uh, it was up to uh, Siam, mm -hmm. uh, Thailand, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so s only sixty or seventy percent overlap in mm -hmm. your estimation. So the difference between Malay Indonesian is mm -hmm. greater than the difference between British English and American English. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, from my experience, when I went to Brunei, <coughs> when I'm here in Singapore, uh, we seem to share the mm -hmm. structures, the words, mm -hmm. and so on, so not in Indonesia. Yeah, so I can say that uh, between uh, Indonesian language and Malaysian, uh, there is Singapore that preach our language. Because mm -hmm. I also always talk with Rinda, uh, who is uh, Singaporean, and I can understand maybe uh, almost of uh, all of her uh, Malaysian language. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, this is uh, interesting to me. I would have always thought that they were closer than you said, but uh, yeah. there's their farther apart. So, when we're talking about mutual intelligibility and we're thinking of uh, Hindi Urdu, for example, uh, we ought not to put uh, Mele Indonesian in that same class as being okay. two things. If I, if I decide that I want to uh, learn Indonesian mm -hmm. and then I want to learn Mele, <coughs> I need to do a separate task. That's yeah. what you're saying to me. Actually, uh, we, uh, for uh, Indonesian, uh, it is uh, used in Indonesia and uh, in uh, Timor because Timor uh, historically mm -hmm. was uh, one of our part. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, interesting, and good to know. Okay, thank, thank you. you.